Hey everybody, Jeff here. I'm out at my ranch house. I'm going to give you an update on my grapevine. So, as uh, as I've mentioned before, if you've seen my other videos on the Executive Gardener, uh, today was an unfortunate day because I took out about 10 grapevines. Those grapevines were Cabernet vines, uh, Chardonnay, and uh, Pinot Noir vines. And if you live in Texas, Florida, Louisiana, Southern California, uh, you're, you're in North Carolina, you're, you're, you're uh, your grapevines are susceptible to Pierce disease, uh, transmitted by the sharpshooter. So uh, all of my vines, the 10 I told you about, I had to pull out of the ground today, got rid of and burned. Uh, so the ones that are left are the Pierce disease resistant or Pierce disease tolerant uh, types, and I'll talk about those today. So I'll show you what's going on with my one, two-year-old grapevines. And uh, unfortunately, I won't show you the stuff I pulled out, but I'll show you what I have from grapes and what you can expect from one two-year-old vine. So uh, stay tuned, I'll get behind the camera and show you. So uh, here's a grapevine called the Concord grapes, Concord seedless grapes, and they actually grow pretty well. Um, they're pretty vigorous as you can see there. They grow up to the top of my uh, cage here. But uh, these things for the most part are pretty resistant to Pierce disease and I'll show you the production here. So um, these things, I think, are going to be ready to go. They, they actually do turn purple. You'll see one that's uh, become purple there, but the rest are. So they, each, they have a, probably about two, three weeks left to go. And um, anyway, you'll see they're nice bunches of grapes. Um, they're kind of sweet. They're used for uh, jam or jelly. So uh, we actually got a pretty good, uh, you can see here, production of grapevines. And... One of the things, if you're a <clears throat> new grape grower, I encourage you to take a few courses on growing grapes. I learned mine mostly through uh, trial and error, but um, you need to know how to prune, uh, what to prune, and um, in general, as, as you may or may not know, grapes typically, the shoots of grapes for new production grow off of one-year-old vines. Um, so anyway, this is the Concord grape. We're going to be making a bunch of jelly and jam this year, but uh, this one did not was not bothered by uh, Pierce disease. So uh, lots of good uh, good production here. So here's one of my Cabernet vines, the ones that was actually produced fruit this year. Most of them look like this, and I had to cut them out of the ground uh, from the root and got rid of them. But if you take a look at this. Um, You'll see the bees like the grapevines too. So there's a bee work, working on that grapevine. I'm actually gonna taste one of these and see what it tastes like. But um, uh, this produced a little bit of uh, grapes. They weren't huge grapes, I think, because of Pierce disease. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, get a, a ton of grapes. But you can see with Pierce disease, you see this, this vine. Um, it's just, it's supposed to look somewhat green. It's already brown, it's already turning um, almost in the bark, and you'll see the color of that too. So that's evidence that uh, this also probably has Pierce disease, and I'll probably have to uh, pull this out of the ground, but anyway, those are a few Cabernet grapes that uh, myself and the bees there uh, are both enjoying. Um, just thought I'd give you uh, a quick update on that, but again, stay away from uh, Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, all those if you live in the southern states that are susceptible to Pierce disease. Uh, I'll show you a few other vines here. So this is a different type of grapevine called the muscadine grapevine. The muscadine grapevine um, has shown immunity and it is tolerant and resistant, actually resistant, not tolerant, to Pierce disease. The uh, muscadine grapevine is uh, being examined a lot by um, scientists for its value. The muscadine grapevine has an extra chromosome, which makes basically makes this rare grape uh, vine susceptible to pretty much all diseases out there. So you'll see they don't really come in bunches; they're individual grapes. Uh, these will turn red. But long story short, um, I actually take these. Uh, I actually uh, take these as a vitamin supplement, and uh, I travel often for work. I travel three days a week. And for the past eight, nine months, I've not had the flu or a cold. So what the muscadine uh, grape does is they grind it up, the seed and the outside skin, which has most of the uh, things that build up your immunity. 
and they put it in a gel cap and you take one a day. So the muscadine uh, is extremely healthy, antioxidants, and is believed to improve your immunity. They're looking at studies for cancer and things like that. I don't know if it will help with uh, uh, not get cancer or not, but uh, I can tell you this little uh, grape has shown some great potential and what its ability to do. And if you live in an area like Florida or Texas or any of these places, and there's another one over there, um, I would tell you, uh, you should probably look at this plant because first of all, it's a, it's a, the outside of the grape, it's a, it's a hard, it's not like most grapes. So it's a bit of a hard, um, outside skin. So it's a little bit tough to bite into, but when you get into it, it's real sweet. They do make, uh, certain varieties of muscadine jelly and some wine. It's not as good as uh, other wine that you'd taste like a Cabernet or a Merlot or Chardonnay, but a very different sweet type of taste. But uh, these are the muscadines are doing very well. Um, uh, this is, I think these plants are one or two years old and you can see there's a pretty good amount of fruit production. They don't, again, they don't put out bunches, uh, but they do have individual grapes and these probably will be done in a month or two. So this is the muscadine uh, grape. So what you're looking at here is the favorito grape. Uh, that's this right here you're looking at. Uh, this has shown to be um, tolerant, not resistant, but tolerant to uh, muscadine disease, or excuse me, muscadine, pierce disease. So it is a bunch vine. Now this is only a year or two old grape vine. So as you see, it's doing really well. Um, and it's pretty prolific and you'll see again see this the branch here is green it's not that brown that a pierce disease gets so it looks pretty pretty darn healthy uh, because it's uh, only a one or two year old uh, plant um, you know there's not uh, a ton of grapes on it so I expect a lot more production this year but this is the favorito grape it's an offshoot of the black Spanish grape both grapes grapes uh, and vines show a tolerance to Pierce disease, so it's a good one to get uh, if you're in the south. So this is the Favorito grape. So one last grape vine I'm going to show you um, is a Victoria Red. So the Victoria Red is this here. It is a very young plant, young grape vine, so there's not much to it, and I don't have any grapes on it. So the purpose of showing you this is that uh, some of these uh, grape vines are engineered by uh, agricultural schools like Texas A&M, which is this, this one came out. And what they do is they take, they engineer uh, certain varieties of grapes and engineer it in a way that the grape vines become uh, resistant or tolerant to Pierce disease. This is one such grape vine. So the Victoria Red, hard to get, uh, is tolerant and I believe resistant to Pierce disease. So uh, nothing on this. It's a very young plant. I got a few of these from um, one of the online stores, but it's kind of cool. The Victoria is actually a table grape, so it's not a grape uh, like the Blanc de Bois, the Favorito, and the Black Spanish. They're all wine grapes. Uh, this is uh, indeed a, um, a, uh, a table grape. So one of the first table grapes that were engineered uh, to be resistant and tolerant to Pierce disease. So I uh, thought I'd share that with you. No fruit now, but uh, hopefully we'll have some fruit here shortly. So you just heard me reference Blanc de Bois. Blanc de Bois is a white grape uh, that is uh, tolerant, not resistant, but tolerant to Pierce disease. So uh, I didn't think I had any, but here's a uh, two-year-old Blanc de Bois plant. I'll show you what it looks like, but again, it is a tolerant to Pierce disease. So uh, I think this is a two-year-old, but you'll see here uh, there's tiny little grapes there. Uh, probably, um, you'll see, there, it is a bunch grape. Uh, these things will probably be done in late August. It is early July right now. Um, but I do have a few bunches, which is kind of exciting, you'll see there. And um, again, if you look at this plant, uh, I'll show you a little bit of the, of the, uh, the vine here. It's green, okay, green. And uh, when, uh, when something has Pierce disease, Actually, you know what? I'm looking at this right now. So I was referring to the sharpshooter, and I'll show you. There's actually a sharpshooter on this plant. Take a look. Oh, shoot. Let me see if I can see it. He's he's getting away from me, but there he is. See him? See that thing right there? That bug? That sharpshooter bug is the bug uh, that flies that transmits Pierce disease. That's it right there. Um, and there's another one right there. So that proves my point that 
There he is right there. That's, that's what kills grapevines, the sharpshooter insect. Hope you can see it. But um, So if you're going to grow grapes in the south, you might as well get something that's resistant. Now, it's not the sharpshooter itself. It's the bacteria that, um, that it produces, I believe, when it gets in the vines that acts almost like arterial sclerosis. It, it uh, keeps flow of water to the extremities of the grape. So that is the insect, and um, that is why uh, you need um, Pierce disease resistant uh, vines. It's kind of interesting because I'm looking over here, and over here, there's actually two more up there. So um, they exist. So if you're going to be growing wine and grapes uh, in the south, do it the right way and get the right type of vines, okay? So I hope this has been helpful. You learned a little bit about Pierce disease, what vines will work if you live in some of the southern climate states, the coastal areas like Texas, Florida, Georgia, New Orleans, and parts of Southern California. Hope you've enjoyed this episode from the Executive Gardener. And uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Also for